So we're going to close our show with some news out of T-Mobile, and that is the alliance that T-Mobile have for, has formed with Oseus. And this alliance is intended to deliver key offerings to the U.S. government, and they're going to start with the Department of Defense, which is always exciting and interesting. So this this uh, alliance was announced a couple of weeks ago, and it will leverage T-Mobile's 5G network and OCS's product offerings and solutions, which are specifically designed for the federal government. Um, this leapt out at me because you know the, the DoD is, of course, focused on accelerating 5G adoption as they need to be. And, um, you know, this is all about ensuring that forces can operate anywhere and under any conditions. And so together, T-Mobile and OCS will, will deliver apps that underpin things, AR and VR capabilities, training, active operations, and maintenance and logistics. And, you know, as I mentioned, T-Mobile brings its 5G advanced network solutions offering, which is a suite of managed network solutions that combine 5G connectivity with edge computing. And this allows for data to be connected, to be collected and processed anywhere it's generated at really rapid speeds. Incredibly important in military situations, right? And OCS brings its expertise in developing tools and technology for delivering access to fast, reliable cellular-based connectivity and mission-critical operations. They'll focus on secure 5G networks, multi-access, edge compute, and sec DevOps. So this is a big step forward for the Department of Defense. I think it's a super smart alliance between T-Mobile and OCS. Really excited to see some of the things that actually we'll never even know about some of the things that come out of this, and that's okay. But I thought it was really kind of exciting news to see. Well, I agree. In fact, yeah, I think it definitely highlights T-Mobile's managed services capabilities. The fact Absolutely. that the uh, Department of Defense is turning to them for this strategically critical capabilities uh, yeah. speaks uh, volumes. And yeah, it's also about the edge computing. I, I think uh, that definitely uh, merits uh, more attention. Uh, basically, it's joined at the hip with 5G connectivity or 5G builds in general, right. particularly in 5G standalone environments. And uh, it's, I think, getting uh, the uh, proper attention here because you obviously have to distribute uh, the data workloads, optimize them where the activity is, you know, you right. just can't keep back hauling them to, uh, to traditional data centers data and so centers, forth. Yeah. And so this definitely is demonstrating why 5G is different from LTE, for example, you get that built in right. flexibility and agility to uh, do that uh, with uh, 5G programmability uh, capabilities. And I think another uh, key takeaway is you hit the nail on the head there, Shelley, is the sec DevOps uh, right. aspect. Uh, because uh, as we know, we have to pay attention to security comprehensively. There's no exceptions. Zero trust is the name of the day. Uh, we saw what happened to Solar Winds uh, right. uh, recently. Uh, it was the fact that you actually had a hacker or you know a a cyber threat. Uh, that uh, got into their supply chain capabilities. And Sec DevOps actually addresses that very issue. It's like right. if the software that is being used is being co-developed with built-in security from ground zero, that it definitely improves the odds of it not being compromised even during the development stage or somewhere in the supply chain. And so right. I think that this is uh, definitely uh, addressing it and indicates that, yes, you know, the, the good guys, so to speak, are fighting against, uh, you know, that type of cyber threat. Um, and uh, that's quite uh, simply essential, it's particularly yeah. the Department of, of Defense. And uh, one thing I kind of like is that it includes applications, uh, as you noted, like AR, VR, and a lot of the augmented reality, virtual reality uh, attention has been on the consumer side. That stands to reason because, you know, gamers, for example, are uh, making it more uh, commercially uh, viable and uh, a, a low hanging fruit for 5G monetization. But it has a great deal of industrial and Absolutely. also uh, defense applications for things like digital twins, you know, right. maintaining uh, a training 
uh, for example, using uh, AR, VR headsets and a host of other uh, capabilities that make it, uh, I think, uh, very critical to right. a successful uh, defense operation or training and, and so forth. So, yeah, I think uh, the announcement, uh, well, not as high profile as Starlink versus DISH, uh, yeah. definitely uh, is showing some important uh, developments here in our 5G ecosystem. Yeah, absolutely. And and to uh, to your point, you know, I, I am positive that the use of AR VR by the Department of Defense is not a nascent thing, right? I'm sure mm -hmm. that this is something that's been in use for a while. We just don't think about it, right, as much as we think about its applications in the gaming ecosystem. Um, but I think really, you know, to wrap this up, I think what's the most interesting thing to me is that seeing T-Mobile's managed services, its 5G advanced network solution offering um, at play here, I think is uh, something that we're going to see, be seeing and hearing a lot more of. So that is really exciting news as well.